All right, so today we're gonna to talk about how to compress your drum bus. There's several different techniques and styles of compression that we could potentially use to compress our drum bus. I'm gonna go through my go-to strategy of compressing the drum bus. And so you can learn a few things by watching the various styles of compression that you could potentially use, decide what's best for your mix, and then actually be able to execute that. Part of this series that I'm doing, I also created two different guides for you to help you out as you're moving forward in your journey of mixing, systematically. So the first one is going to be an EQ guide, which gives you all of the basic understanding of where the areas of interest when you're EQing each and every single instrument. Uh, this is just a guideline, but it also gives you some tools that you can use to understand what's actually wrong with your uh, instruments and your tracks as you're diving into EQing various instruments. And then the second guide is a guide on compression. This is basically a 101 guide on what compression is and how to use it effectively. There are, it goes through the four styles of compression so that you can understand exactly what I'm talking about throughout this series. So make sure you pick, you pick up both of those guides. Uh, you can find the link right below this video or you can go to mastering.dinosaurdogstudio.com. Calm. Without any further ado, let's dive into how to compress your drum bus. Now that we have pressed and EQ'd our mix bus, we are ready to move on to the instrument buses. So uh, the instrument buses, we're gonna start with compression. We're gonna start with the drums just because it's one of the more, more dynamic instruments generally and also is really the core dynamic movement of the song as well. Great instrument to start with. I'm gonna solo it just so we can hear the what we're doing with compression. Before we actually dive in, we really need to decide what our goal is with our compression. The worst thing to do is just to start throwing on compressors and EQs without any sort of real goal of what we're trying to do. So the first thing I almost always want to do with my drum bus is make it more punchy, just to enhance the drums uh, and the, the kick and the snare that's already there. The next thing I want to do is probably also some thickness type compression. These drums feel a little bit weak as they are, um, but I don't want to just put thickness type compression because then I'm going to kill all of the transients that the drums that really make up the drum. I'm going to use both those types of compression serial serially? I don't know if that's a word, but in serial I'm going to set up two compressors. One's going to be a punchy type compression. The next one is going to be a thickness type compression to get some of that noise floor up and make the drums feel a little bit heavier when they hit. That's my goal with my drums. So let's dive in. So now we have our compressors here. We're going to start with the, working on this, uh, the first one here, uh, this red compressor, and this is going to be our punchy type compression. So again, our goal is to have a slower attack to allow the transients to pass through, but a longer, also a longer release to capture and squish down some of the valleys or the tails of those notes to really enhance the transients that are already there. Just to capture the transients, I'm going to set up my compressor, highest ratio possible, fastest attack and release possible, just to see where those transients are in comparison to the tails themselves. Probably gonna have a pretty aggressive ratio on this. Um, let's start with six and see how where it goes. Again, we want a slower attack, slower release. We're gonna adjust our attack first and then our release. Okay, so I'm kind of liking what's going on there. Let's A, B it by setting up our gain staging. So let's see what our gain is before. Around minus three. Um, I'm gonna want to set up my gain staging so that I'm getting the same average volume, which is the top meter here, the VU meter. Because we're trying to enhance the transients, uh, those are going to be measured by the signal down here on the bottom, because that is the peak volume. So 
So this way we're actually enhancing the transients and actually squishing down the tails, but the tails are the same volume before and after. So overall we have the same volume average, but those transients should be peaking louder than they were before. And that's the, the whole goal of this type of compression. So as you can see, uh, our average volume actually is maybe even a little bit lower, but we just have so much more impact to each and every hit of the drums. I really like how that's sounding right now. Let's move on to the thickness type compression. And remember the thickness type compression is actually the exact opposite of the punchy type compression, but we still wanna maintain some of the work that we've already done with the punchy type compression. And so I'm going to take this and set it up like I would normally with 100% mix. And then I'm actually going to only mix in a little bit of it. I'm gonna be very aggressive also with this thickness type compression because I'm gonna really use it in a parallel. And so that, which means I'm going to allow most of the dry signal through, but then just add a little bit of the, the wet signal. So it's gonna sound really extreme as I'm starting here, but it's going to end up just adding a lot of thickness without damaging all of the punchy type compression I just set up. And so as you notice, I'm gonna use a really aggressive ratio here, the 20 to one. This is going to really dig into the sound, but again, that's completely intentional in what we wanna do. As you can tell, the before and after, the, the needle hardly, hardly moves at all when I have this compress, compressor enabled. I and mean, it sits right around between like minus seven and minus three. When I don't have that, it bounces all the way back to, to 10. It just shows that I'm bringing up the noise floor of this entire track. So anything that's a little bit quieter is really being enhanced when I'm adding this type of compression in here. But I don't really want that so aggressive and I'm going to actually turn this all the way down to zero and I'm gonna mix it in just barely until I feel a little bit more of that depth and that the heaviness of the drums without dis disrupting the punchy type compression that I already have. Yeah, so I'm liking around that. That's pretty normal, around 30% is generally where I land, but I really like that. So that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah.